Hello, welcome to the cliffside. I want to show you the passive watering system I'm still working on here. So we're testing. This is the pond that I've already started. Doesn't hold water and that still sucks. I was really hoping that I'd be able to figure out a natural way for it to hold water was starting to succeed however then at that point when i was starting to succeed i tried to make it deeper it seems i broke through to a part that's very porous but i can fix that later when i have the shape right it's been a while though so who knows how long it'll take looking across my milkweed patch that i'm going to adjust the location of next year um looking across this you can see a big water barrel. There's a hose that comes out the side that is in the always on position so that when it rains, it then siphons to here at about a foot above its empty marker. Would I prefer that it just empty at a non-siphon rate? Yeah, probably, probably. However, um, this is where we're at right now as far as that goes. It keeps sliding in, and at the moment, I'm just not going to argue. <laughs> so, what I have then is two overflow points. This one goes into a channel that is just wood chips and that feeds most of the garden going down that way that way and makes a turn yeah it's great some of the parts of that are up to three feet deep and they're just wood chips and some plant stalks and stuff like that on this side as you can see I'm trying to make a much more structured secondary overflow one that will accept quite a lot of water and not get as compressed so that it's not as much like seeping through as it is more flowing. This front yard, the far side gets pretty dry. Let's look through the thicket here and down the trench and then go up and I'm going to look at the viewfinder. I think it goes like this. And yeah, so my elderberries over there get very dry. And I'd really like this water to carry the whole way there. I wonder how possible that'll be. But for starters, we need to get it flowing far enough to get it away from the pond and not just flooding down the walk. So I can pick up, when they get left on the, on the dock at work, I can pick up trash. And one of the things that end up trash are large pieces of conduit, large diameter conduit, small chunks because these leftover bits aren't useful to them and there's also a bit of bamboo which i'm sure won't last as long as the metal but hey you know we do what we can and i'm going to place rocks over this when it's finalized so what i want to do is take these and pour them right where the overflow would be coming in and i want you to see there. I'm going to pour the second one same place. So this is ushering the water away at this moment pretty fast, but I would need to continue to have this much conduit to keep it moving this fast. So to some extent, I'm thinking of leaving some of this more open, at least through the winter. The part where I wouldn't be walking too often. So we're going to empty these and then we're going to go over to see how the residual flow is going. 
I did just finish um, kind of like redigging a lot of this. I'm going to make sure this is fully empty. All right. So let's head. And you can see that's still flowing pretty good. I think you can tell. We're going to head past the thicket that holds my compost in here. We're going to head past this whole thicket and come see how far this goes. Now this is the second pour and so it has made it a lot farther because the earlier soil needed to saturate. So this is looking pretty good. It's gotten the whole way down here. This part does have a wood chip trench in it already. And you can tell because it keeps flowing and the water just disappears. And the water continues coming in. You can see the rate of flow up here is pretty fast and slows down a bit. So if And truly, even if I have to get conduit at the store or cut down some of the smaller diameter pieces that I have free from the dock, because I have some like inch instead of like two inch, I have like one inch. So that was what, like six gallons? And it has traveled through pretty well. So when that secondary overflow activates, it's no longer going to flood the walkway, it looks like to me. It'll just come to here. That's what it looks like to me. I hope that's true. So this is water management and passive watering methods that I've come up with. Now, to be clear, there will be rocks. I get a lot of shale types flagstone coming up out of the ground when I dig. Um, for example, here's a piece that's pretty big under there. Um, can you see? That goes about like that big. So I can place those over top but it would still collapse the clay on the sides at first. So what I'll have to do to start with is... Oops. Poked in the leg with something. I don't know if I just got bit or what. What I'll have to do at first is figure out what I'm filling with. In the low traffic areas, I may be able to use plant stalks that have hollow cores because they're not going to get crushed as quickly. I might not want to, I don't know. But in the high traffic areas, like right across the walkway here, once I have this kind of perfect and it's still flowing pretty good, that's definitely going to have to be something that's not going to collapse when it's walked on. And then I can place stones over top. So, that is... An, an additional new passive watering system to reduce the flood state that my house sometimes experiences and to increase the um, hydration of plants that generally are in dry zones that don't get enough water, such as way over there. This will get backfilled with probably well-rotted wood chips and plant stalks. From here and into there, that's already taken place. Right here, there's actually about a two-foot deep pit and a ramp of soil that's backfilled with wood chips that have been in there quite a while going down to it. So the idea is that the water would come from this trench, percolate through the wood chip situation, and all the way into here. 
And in flood state, I, I fully believe that should be possible. On the other hand, I may need to dig some of these back out and add some more free-flowing type of materials. I have not determined what the case might be on that yet, so I hope you're having a really good day. I hope you're not having too much trouble with lantern flies. We just got them this year, and I am very not enjoying their existence. They love my grape, and that really sucks. Um, but uh, thanks so much for visiting the cliffside. This is earthscaping, which is something in permaculture. Uh, take care. I gotta chop that. Okay. Bye.